Governor, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Maria. Great to be here. So it's cold out here. Yeah, it's cold in, in <laughs> Iowa. We know we're just getting the, uh, the numbers from durable goods orders, and it's cold there as well, by the way, because you've got a, a, an economy <laughs> yeah. that continues to show signs of deteriorating. Are you hearing these concerns from Iowa voters right now, Governor? Absolutely, Maria. You know, when I hear the president in his State of the Union try to talk about how great the economy is doing, uh, he's just missing it. He needs to get out more. And if he would come here in Iowa, he would talk to single moms like the one I spoke to the other night in Indianola, who talked about how difficult it is for her, how she's trying to go to work, but if she does, she loses all the benefits. Her kids basically end up in dire poverty. Or the man who makes $59,000 a year in Davenport, Iowa, he told me that on 59000 a year, he and his wife, that's all on their insurance, Obamacare this year is going to cost them $28,000. Wow. That's half their income. These are the stories of real Americans. I agree. These are the people yeah. who've lost their jobs. And Governor I, Andy Bush here, I think what's interesting on the Republican side, uh, and you're certainly part of this, I, I haven't seen this in a very, very long time where the Republican candidates have put out detailed tax plans. And I think yours is very interesting because it's a national sales tax, but you eliminate the income tax and you also have full expensing contained in there. Walk us through why that's important for Iowa. Well, it's important for all of America because right now we tax capital and labor. So everything we make in America has 22% embedded tax in it. But they're not taxing capital and labor in our competing countries like Mexico, China, Indonesia. As a result of that, we're getting hammered. People are losing manufacturing jobs, 5 million since uh, the year 2000. Trillions of dollars of money is parked offshore that would be in our economy, but it isn't because people are protecting it from the income tax. So if we stop punishing, which means taxing, the productivity of workers, if we stop taxing the investment of investors, then we have work and investment coming back. We're losing both. And that's why the fair tax is a, a superior alternative to taxing people's productivity, their income, their investments. Why do you think you're going to be able to get tax reform through when we've been talking about this for so many years and it's been so impossible to get done? You have to have leadership to do it. It's never going to get done without a president who can explain it, who can articulate it, and who can make Americans understand how this helps them. And that's one of the reasons that I'm in this race, because uh, I don't think most of the tax plans, I hear some of these guys, and, and all they're doing is tapping the hammer, twisting the screwdriver. It's tinkering with the tax code. But the power of the tax code is the power to shake down the donors so that they can get contributions to the political campaigns. They get tax breaks to the people who give the donors. And look, the people who are taking the gut punches are the folks out here in middle America who don't make millions of dollars a year, they're hoping to hold on to a forty-five, fifty thousand dollar a year income, if that. Yeah. And they're the ones for whom tax reform makes a world of difference and puts them back in the game of being in the middle class. So, so how do you prepare for tonight, Governor? How do you think tonight will be different, given the fact that Donald Trump will not be on stage? Uh, and what are you doing to sort of break out? Well, you know, I've got to just answer the questions honestly. I hope I, we have substantive questions. We have in the last few debates, and I think that's been very helpful, uh, for, quite frankly. And I'm not just uh, now kissing up to you guys, but the Fox Business debates were t the two most substantive debates that we have had in the entire cycle. And I say that sincerely because Thank you the very questions much, were about that. issues. Mm -hmm. No, they truly were. They really genuinely were. And that's what we need tonight. We need questions that focus on the people of America and what we would do as president to help their lives get back on track so that uh, we can hand this country to our kids and grandkids in better shape than we found it, are, are finding it right now. Uh, you think it's going to be a, a, a real sort of different, a stark difference with Donald Trump not on stage? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I wasn't going to be on the stage with him. Um, but I, yeah. I think way too many people are talking about Donald Trump, and they're not talking about the Americans out there, uh, you know, who lost their jobs at the Newton, Iowa, Maytag plant when it shut down. And, you know, it's not about Donald Trump. It's not about me. Uh, it's not about any of the other candidates. It really ought to be about how Americans are getting hammered out there every single day. And you watch people, you look in the just their faces, and you see their 
their sense of frustration, you see their anger. Uh, it's, it's like they know that the people who are shelling out the big bucks to the politicians, uh, they're fine. They're going to be they're going to be great. They're not going to have to miss a vacation. Uh, they'll jet away to the Caribbean when it's cold, and they'll summer in the Hamptons and go to Maine. But these folks aren't even going to be able to, you know, to go 50 miles from home and have a vacation. And they just want to know that somebody yeah. is going to be out there fighting for them. That, that's what I hope the debate can be about. I'd love to run a little bit of your ad, Governor. Uh, the Adele song. Do we have that? <laughs> Here it comes. I winds okay. are not for sale. They're stubborn and picky. There's just no difference between Obama and Hillary. <laughs> okay, Governor, what were you thinking with this? <laughs> well, it was my inner Adele. Uh, you know, we, I, I think sometimes we have to back up and have some fun with this stuff. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to show that as we travel out there around Iowa on the frozen tundra of snow-covered cornfields, uh, you know, there are people in all these cities, and we try to bring a little to the culture of Iowa, do it in a fun way. Interesting thing, the reaction has gone from some people said, that's the funniest thing we've seen this cycle. Others say, that's the dumbest, most cringeworthy, corniest <laughs> nonsense we've ever seen in our lives. So, you know, the good news is, everybody's talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can all agree on Adele that we, that we like her, her right. beautiful voice. Governor, good to see you. Thanks so much. You're a sport for, uh, for explaining it. Thanks very much. You bet. We'll